Well, welcome. We're uh, here for Good Friday service. Um, just as people get on and uh, connect uh, here on our live service, our goal is uh, to just celebrate um, the crucifixion of Jesus. And 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 it's such a kind of a, an odd concept sometimes to think about a day where we we focus on his death, but but it was because of his death that we have life. And so, as we go to song tonight, just um, just be thinking about, it. just have a meditative heart. Uh, you know, think of the Passover season that we're in, and and the Passover lambs that would be prepared, and the songs of the Levites as they would sing those things. And so, just as we sing, just we're, we're participating with something that God had planned before the foundations of the earth. So let's go ahead and pray, and begin our evening. And so, Father, we thank you for tonight, Lord. We thank you for your great love and your great mercy. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you'd be glorified, Lord, that you'd be magnified, Lord, just in our singing, Lord, magnified just as we meditate and read of, of your life, Lord, your death, Lord. And so just thank you uh, as we look ahead to your resurrection. And so will you just be blessed tonight? We just ask uh, for your, your, a fresh filling of your spirit, and we just pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Lord of heaven I do not deserve the grace that you have given or the promise of your word Lord I stand in of the sacrifice you made your blessing beyond measure my debt you freely paid your love is deep than any ocean higher than the heavens reaches beyond the stars in the sky Jesus your love has no bounds Jesus your love has no bounds Jesus Lord of heaven oh, I do not deserve the grace that you have given for the promise of your word Lord I stand in wonder of the sacrifice you made your blessing beyond measure stars in the sky. Your love 
love is deep, your love is wide, your love is great, your love is high, your love is all we ever need, your love is all we ever need, your love is deep, your love is wide, your love is great, your love is high, your love is all we ever need, your love is all we ever need. Love is deeper than any ocean higher than the heavens reaches beyond the stars in the sky. Oh, Jesus, your love has no bounds. Jesus, your love has no bounds. you endured my pain Savior you bore all my shame all because of your love all because of your love maker of the Broken for the sins of the earth All because of your love All because of your love Because of your cross My debt is because of your blood, my sins are washed away. Now all of my life, I freely give. Because of your love, because of your love, I live. Innocent and holy. to set the captives free all because of your love Lord you gave your life for me and I will give my life to you all because of your All because of your love Because of your cross My debt is paid Because of your blood My sins are washed away And now all of my life I freely give because of your love, because of your love, I live. You did it for me, you did it for love, it's your victory, Jesus, you are enough. You did it for me, you did it for love. It's your victory, Jesus, you are enough. You did it for me, and you did it for love. It's your victory, Jesus, you are enough. 
my debt is paid because of your blood my sins are washed away now all of my life I freely give because of your love because of your love because of your cross my debt is of your blood my sins are washed away now all of my life I freely give because of your love because of your love I So what I'd like to do tonight is to read out of um, the Gospel of John. So if you have your Bible, you could just turn over with me to John chapter 19. The Gospel of John speaks from a perspective that always has in mind the crucifixion of Christ. It starts very much in the beginning of one who would come, who would be rejected um, by his own, um, but would come with a purpose to declare the glory of God. And right away it goes to the testimony of John the Baptist, who said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And as it leads up, it, it leads up to this, this hour that Jesus talks about, that, that his, his hour had not come, his hour had not come, and then he speaks to that place where he, he says, Now my hour has come. And, and then through this, the, through that process, he finds himself speaking in this way um, uh, to his disciples leading up to, to the Garden of Gethsemane where he uh, prays and, and, and Judas betrays him. And John captures that, that section where he, he's telling them he has to go somewhere without them, that they can't go. And so one of those important realities is, is that as they're going, as they're walking through this process, they're going to be separated from Jesus. And Jesus is going to be separated from those who are his friends, those are his uh, disciples. Um, the only one that's with him would be the Father. And so now it's come to that place in John 19 where, where, where he is taken and put into the hands of the Romans uh, for crucifixion. So I'm going to go ahead and read in, in, in verse 1 of, Psalm, of John 19. So when Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. Then they said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him uh, out to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then Jesus came out uh, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Therefore, when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, uh, You take him and crucify him for... I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because, of he, uh, because he made himself the Son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard uh, that saying, he was more afraid and went again to the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know who I am, that I have the power to crucify you and the power to release you? 
And Jesus answered, You could have no power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. From then, uh, then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, I, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar's. Uh, moreover, makes himself a king speaks, uh, whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. And when Pilate therefore heard that, that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in the place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was preparation day of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, behold your king. But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered him uh, to them to be crucified. Then they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called uh, the place of, the, of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and, they, uh, and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. And now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And then many of the Jews read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And, he was, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore, the chief priests and the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. And then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier apart, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. Then they said before, uh, uh, therefore among themselves, uh, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, Who, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them. And my clothing, they ca for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his sisters and Mary the wife of Cl Clopas, Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw, uh, therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And then he said to his disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that now, uh, that things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel of full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled the sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. When we consider this reality of, of our Good Friday, Thank you. And don't forget to adjust your mics at home. When we consider Good Friday and just this reality, when you, th when you think about what is going on in this passage that we read, one of the things that really sticks out to me is that Jesus kind of knows what's going on. He, he doesn't seem out of control or lost in it. He knows his place and what he is accomplishing and what he's doing. And so it, it's, it's one of those challenging things that, 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 that as Jesus is doing what he's doing, at the same time, there's a process going on. And, and as we read, it was the day of preparation. So they're preparing for the Sabbath, but they're also preparing for this, this celebration, this, this amazing um, <clears throat> um, uh, festival of Passover, where they would bring in all these lambs. And, 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 and so there would be a process to the Passover time. And during that Passover time, there's, um, the, 
the time where they would actually, once they they got their lamb, they would wait for a specific time after they would remove these little cakes, these little things out. Once both of these little cakes were removed, then everyone could go in and begin this process. So there was a certain timing. Everybody had to have their lambs, and then they would go through this process of walking them, walking them in at the Temple Mount. And so I want to read a little bit from Al, um, Alfred uh, Edersheim. And he says that while the Savior still tarried with the disciples outside the city, Peter and John were completely completing their preparations. They followed the motley crowd, all leading their sacrificial lambs up to the uh, Temple Mount. And here they were grouped in three divisions. Already the evening sacrifice had been offered. Ordinarily it was slain at 2.30 p.m. and offered about uh, at about 3.30. But on, uh, on the eve of Passover, as uh, we have seen it, it was killed an hour earlier, and, uh, uh, and if the 14th of Nisan fell on Friday, or rather from Thursday at Eve, which would be the eve of uh, Friday, uh, it would be two hours earlier. And so, as to avoid any needless breach of the Sabbath, on the occasion to which we refer, the evening sacrifice had already been slain at 1.30 and offered at 2.30. But before the incense was burned uh, or their lamps were trimmed, the paschal sacrifice had to be offered. And it was done uh, <clears throat> on, the, on this wise. Uh, the first of the three festival divisions with their paschal lambs was omitted within the courts of the priests. Each division must consist of not less than 30 persons, three by 10, the symbolic number of, divine, uh, of the divine and of completeness. Uh, immediately the massive gates were closed behind them. The priests drew a threefold blast from their silver trumpets uh, when the Passover was slain. Altogether, the scene was most impressive. All along the court, uh, up to the altar of the burnt offering, priests stood in, in two rows, and one holding, uh, holding golden and the other silver bowls. And in these... Uh, the blood of the paschal lambs with, we, with each Israelite slew for himself as representative uh, his company at the paschal supper and was caught up by the priest who handed it to his colleagues and receiving back the empty bowl. So the bowls with the blood were passed up to the priest at the altar who jerked it into in one jet at the base of the altar. And, and so the, the sacrifice of the blood was poured into the altar. Now, while this is going on, and this is what I kind of wanted to read this for. While this was going on, a most solemn hymn of praise was raised, the Levites leading in song and offering either repeatedly, uh, repeating after them or merely responding. Every first line of the psalm was repeated by the people, while to each of the others they responded by hallelujah or praise the Lord. This service of song con, uh, consisted of the so-called Hallel, which comprised Psalms 113 through 118. And thus the Levites would begin, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, and then the people would re repeat, Hallelujah. And then uh, the Levites would praise, Hallelujah, o, o ye servants of the Lord, and the people responded, Hallelujah. And then the Levites would say, uh, praise uh, or hallelujah the name of Jehovah and the people would respond hallelujah and then similarly when Psalm 113 had been finished Psalm 114 and they would walk right through those and they would speak about uh, when Israel went to Israel and the people would say when Israel went out to Israel and, and the house of Jacob and so this was actually going on at the time when they actually had these lambs and they were taking them for, for sacrifice. And so they would go through this sacrifice and these hymns would be sung over and over in a repeated way. And as they would be repeated, and as they would come through, there's this picture that they would lead all the way up to Psalm 118. And, and, and when they came to there, this is besides this, uh, the first, these three lines were also repeated uh, by the people in verses 25 and 26. Save now, I beseech thee, Jehovah. O Jehovah, I beseech thee. Send now prosperity, and blessed be he who cometh in the name of the Lord. May it not be that the solemn and impressive hymn corresponds the Alleluia song of the redeemed church in heaven, as it's described in Revelation 19, 1, 3, 4, and 6. And so there's this beautiful song that we find in, in, in the book of Revelation. 
And the reminder there is when he returns, when he comes back in the second coming, there, there's this great hallelujah song. And, and, and the Hallel, as they would sing over the, the, the sacrifices, it's important to remember that these sacrifices were, were, were how they re- remembered, how they were redeemed out of bondage. So for us on Good Friday, what we're doing when we're singing, we're participating with something that's, that, that goes way back, uh, an ongoing of God's people. And, and we're connected to what he has been establishing from eternity, what he would accomplish for us. And, and I think sometimes, it, as, we, as we, we, we forget sometimes, that as Jesus was sacrificed, he truly was our Passover. He was the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And I think sometimes we forget that, 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 that it took that to accomplish my salvation. That he really had to come, God in the flesh, and die for my sins. That he had to give himself for me, for you, for us. And I think it's important that, that we remember that. And that's why we sing so much in church, right? We're, we're singing because he is worthy the one who brings us out of bondage. He's the one that, that, that takes us to that next step. And, and so, so it, it's interesting as we, as we consider today that, that Jesus is the one who said, um, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and, and of death. And, and, and this is put in a place where he talks about him being almighty, that he is the mighty God, and, and he is the one who lives and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. So if you ever doubt God's love, especially in, in isolation and these types of days, it's important that we remember that he demonstrated his love for us that while we are still yet sinners, Christ died. And I think it's just as we sing and as we move, go forward that, that we meditate on the fact of that love that he demonstrated, but also what he accomplished at the cross. He literally bore our sins, God in the flesh, that, that he would come and put on human flesh and, and have those two natures and, and the fullness of his humanity. You know, we know from the garden, he did not want to go, but nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done, he says to the Father. And so it was not something, if there was any other way of salvation, it, it could be accomplished any other way, but there was no other way. And Jesus prayed, won that battle in the garden, then he went to the cross, and, 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 and what God would deliver for us is, is, is this great salvation. So one of the things, I, I don't really share these, but I wanted to share tonight, just um, sometimes God just kind of gives me a song, and I'm not going to sing it uh, in case uh, you were, got scared and you started just shutting it down. But, but I want to read this, just some words that the Lord had given me on Good Friday. And so why do we sing to a crucified king? Why is there a day that we celebrate the slain? One should ponder what was done in that Israeli sun on a hill called Calvary, where there stood that dreaded tree, that Jesus the Messiah died for you and me. So why do we sing, and why is there a day? Because it wasn't on a whim, he was crucified, it was him. It was God on that wood to make this Friday we call good. So now, this led the way unto our hopeful Easter day. So sing, I say, so choose this way, for by grace it was won through faith in the sun. There's a place where streams 
streams of grace flow deep and wide where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down
the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus no precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus for my part in this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus and for my cleansing. This I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that made.
Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, He washed it white as snow. And when before the stand in him complete Jesus died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. No, oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Satisfied her hunger was Billows calmed on raging seas For the souls of men she craved Sun and moon from balcony Turned their head in disbelief Precious love would taste the sting Disfigured and disdain On Friday a thief on Sunday a king laid down in grief but woke with the keys of hell on that day first born of the slain the man Jesus Christ laid death in his grave Three days in darkness slept The morning sun of righteousness Arose to shame the throes of death And overturn his rule Now daughters and the sons of men Would pay not their dues again The debt of blood they owed was ran When the day he rolled anew on Friday a thief, on Sunday a king, laid down in grief, but woke with the keys of hell on that day, first born of the slain, the man Jesus Christ laid death in his grave. Hell and 
returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i'll stand no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pry me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I stand in Christ alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song I'd like to read from Revelation 19, and it says, And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty uh, thundering, saying, Alleluia. For the Lord our God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. As we consider just this Alleluia, this, this Good Friday 2020, it, it's, it's amazing that we'll probably never forget 2020. But even more than that, we should not forget what Jesus Christ has done for us at the cross that he became sin for us, that w we might become the righteousness of God, the word says. And so may we give him glory. May he, he get all the glory in, this, in that sense of alleluia. And I, I just want to encourage you as we kind of go to our places, you know, right? We're all, you're at your place. I'm, we're going to go to our place. But what I want to encourage you is, is that, that Jesus died with purpose, knowingly for you and i think it's really important that we never forget that he, he considered you he considered me at the cross and so no matter what life's been throwing at you no matter what's going on in your life in your circumstances know that jesus loves you that he would be willing to leave you know the son of god would would step in into into humanity putting on human flesh, dwelling among us, and, and so that we might live f for him. And so he gave his life for you that we might live for him, the Bible says. And so as we, sh we just close in prayer, uh, it's so simple to become a Christian. It's so simple to rest in that peace. It's a turning away from sin and self, and it's a turning to him. What he did at the cross, dying for our sins, that he was buried, and on the third day, and here we come, right? Easter Sunday, uh, you know, that resurrection day. And so believe on Jesus. Trust him, right? So as we pray, before we pray, I just want to invite you to Easter uh, service at 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be here at Facebook Live again. And, um, and the goal is, again, to celebrate. But don't forget that we've been sharing testimonies. Uh, it's been such a blessing. Thank you, those who have already done that. Uh, hashtag uh, Jesus changed my life. It was really encouraging to me to see people step out of their comfort zone, to, uh, you know, because this is not really in my comfort zone as well. And so just stepping out to share what Jesus, how he changed uh, their life. And what that does is it points to this reality that, that it's not about the pastor and everybody coming to hear just the pastor it's about the people that make up the church and that each of us have a testimony each of us have had our lives changed by jesus and so there's that opportunity so so check that out um you could look on the on the facebook page or the or the website for more details but uh love to see you guys on easter it'll be so awesome and uh let's go ahead and pray so father we thank you for this great day we meditate and and remember what you did at the cross and so as we discern what you have done for us, 
Lord, we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, we're thankful that, that by your death you, you paid uh, our, for our sins. And, 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 and in that resurrection day, Lord, we know that that's where our salvation comes from. And so may you be glorified. May, may you get the glory you deserve, Lord, for the, for the suffering uh, at the cross. And so we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll leave the feet on for a little bit just to fellowship and say hi. Uh, God bless you and thank you guys. Thank you guys for serving and the guys in the back. Thank you guys for, for, for tonight. God bless you guys. Happy Good Friday.